Hi there, it's Katie Kreisdell here from Lakeview Aquatic Consultants. Welcome back to your weekly Aquatic Industry Insider. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the updates with the Houston entrapment that occurred last week. And I'm also gonna talk us through the actual aquatic facility inspection reports that are available from the Houston Department of Health. So I wanna start off this video by saying a big thank you to those of you who watched the entrapment video that we released earlier this week. If you didn't watch that video, this video is going to be premised on a lot of the information I shared in that video. But just to bring you up to speed, if you don't have any plans to watch that video, uh, last week, March 23rd, 2024, there was a horrible entrapment death. Alaya Lynette Jaco, uh, died in Houston, Texas through mechanical asphyxiation through an entrapment that occurred at the Doubletree by Hilton, Houston, Brook Hollow. So the last recording I did took us through the facility photos that I could find on the internet, and it also took us through the legal filing that the family, um, the statement of facts or the statement of events from the family who is now suing the property because of Aaliyah's death. Just as I was editing that video a couple of days later, I did come across that EquiSearch photo that I used on the cover of the last video. I'll put it on the screen here. I talked about it a little bit on Instagram. I just finished editing an aquatic industry insider that I've been working on for a couple days in terms of investigating the Houston entrapment death at the Doubletree. I just wanted to express how oh terrifying it is. I just found some photos online that showed the opening that Aaliyah went into and it is even worse than we thought. She went through the pipe in the wall. Pool operators, this is so much worse than any entrapment we've previously seen. This is certainly, in anything I've ever heard of, the worst entrapment that I'm aware of in our industry to date. Uh, in my opinion, I'm sure this was completely preventable. More facts will come out as the investigation proceeds. Certainly, as a hotel, a commercial pool site in the state of Texas, we are seeing that the Houston Department of Health has done some inspection reports on the property. We're gonna be looking at those in this video, but also a federal agency now, the Consumer Product Safety Commission has said that they are going to be investigating. Their tie-in to this situation is that they do federally regulate certain types of products. So the Consumer Product Safety Commission, you may be familiar with the statements that they make regarding toys, cribs, blinds, different products that have an impact on child or user safety. And the CPSC is involved in the Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Safety Act in terms of the entrapment hazard and the different standards by which VGBA drains are created, installed and tested. And so they will have an interest, it's my understanding in this situation, to see if a drain cover was present, did it fail under conditions that could impact other drain covers that are currently installed uh, around the United States. So there is a lot of information that is still coming out regarding this horrible, tragic death. I am not looking to take advantage of this news story and make it a case of us clickbaiting to get additional viewers and an audience. The purpose of this video or any of these videos regarding this entrapment is my personal and professional interest as somebody in the swimming pool industry who has long stated that entrapment hazards still exist despite the rollout of the Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Safety Act in 2008. These entrapments have not gone away. They have been lessened for sure. They've been reduced in some ways, but our public awareness is informed perhaps by complacency in terms of not giving these situations as much attention as they warrant. In this video, I want to look at the two inspection reports that have been released by the Houston Department of Public Health. These crossed my desk after I had already edited the last video, and I suspect there will be further developments in the weeks to come that will necessitate recording additional videos like this. It's not possible to capture all of the facts as they 
uh, as they're released. So let's go ahead and look at the first of those inspection reports. I will link to them in the video description down below. You can also go online and find them directly on the Houston Department of Public Health website. But depending on how long they keep those notices posted, at the time you're watching this video, they may no longer be posted. Some agencies may only keep postings up for 90 days, six months, 12 months. I was not able to find any postings for this property that predate the current inspections when I'm sure they've been inspected at other times in the last few years. And so I suspect that the website doesn't keep more than the most recent inspection records available. So I would like to have a look at these two different inspection reports. We're gonna go through them in a little bit of detail, but I know that for a lot of you who work in the swimming pool industry, you're going to draw your own conclusions based on what we're seeing uh, included in these two reports. This is from the Houston Department of Health and the site is the Doubletree by Hilton Houston Brook Hollow located at 12801 Northwest Freeway. You can go back to my earlier video to see some photos of the actual pool type, the basin. It has been described as a lazy river, so a narrower pool of a pretty shallow depth of three and a half feet that is around the perimeter of some public deck areas, cabanas, in a hotel with a large number of rooms that also hosts events, such as weddings and conferences. So this particular inspection report dates from uh, March 25th. March 25th was last Monday, and the entrapment fatality occurred as it's been reported on Saturday, March 23rd. So it's not surprising that the Department of Public Health received notice of this fatality. They went out to check one of their sites. This would be no different from a restaurant that is uh, alleged to have caused people to be sick with a food contamination. The Department of Public Health would go out based on those either anonymous reports through a call center or through a website form or through just news media reports, they would go out and investigate for their own information. So over on the left, we're gonna see the code violation. Uh, I will link to the code for whether it is Houston or Texas. I just wanna take a cursory look at the violations that are noted and whether those violations give us any indication of the direction that this investigation is going to take. Starting here at the top, pool and spa entry exits observed ladders, ladders to have missing treads. There are pieces missing. Wastewater disposal for pool did not observe an air gap. Backwash and draining water shall be discharged through an air gapped form by positioning the discharge pipe opening at least two pipe diameters above the overflow level of any barrier that may cause flooding and submergence of discharge. I know this one has been reported in a lot of news articles as a cause of the entrapment. I personally cannot comment on that because I don't have the mechanical architectural design background to really speak to the necessity of having these air gaps. They observed a 32 inch channel drain on the wall of the small pool. No document was provided verifying the function of the drain. The concern here is, in my interpretation of what I'm reading, is, is this channel drain new? If so, what are the installation conditions? Who installed it? Who did the sizing? Typically with any sort of drain cover, there is a certificate of installation that comes with it where the serial number or barcode of the specific drain cover itself is stamped onto the certificate and then the installer can easily fill in the date and pertinent measurements such as maximum flow or pump curve like the pump the horsepower of the pump the pump curve that will be produced in association with that opening and whether that particular drain cover complies with the installation requirements and so it is concerning that a channel drain, which is not inherently dangerous, a channel drain can be safe if it is installed under the right circumstances, is observed by the health inspector with no documentation as to when it was placed or how it was placed. 
Uh, pool yard and spa yard enclosures observe two openings on each side of the main gate leading from the hotel lobby. Openings measured greater than four inches. So this will be speaking to a specific gauge or spacing in the pool fence. Pool yard and spa enclosure observed one gate and two doors opening into the pool yard. Frankly, I'm not surprised that the doors were still open if there was a major emergency on Saturday and the pools being inspected on Monday. Not to take sides, but the reports are that the water was drained from the pool, that the deck was completely torn up in order to extract the victim's body. And that's not to say that the pool's not still a fall hazard or that certain doors shouldn't be closed or gates locked, but I'm not surprised that the, one might say even the crime scene or the scene of the incident is probably just all torn up in a disaster two days later. It's not closed off and tidy as it were. And that basically connects to the next line here. Pool yard and spa yard enclosure observed second gate to be completely disassembled due to drowning incident, right? So the, the gate was removed if they had to bring any equipment onto the deck. I would imagine if they had to jackhammer the pool deck to extract the victim's body, Aaliyah's body from the pipe that was in the side of the pool wall, that they had to bring out substantial uh, hardware and equipment to do that. And it would have, I would imagine, um, have taken up some space on the pool deck. Operation and management of pools and spas, low water level due to drowning incident. Actual water level in the pool shall be maintained within the design and operating level range of the rim, gutter, or skimmer system. So this is at odds with the statement that the pool had to be drained in order for the victim's body to be retrieved. I haven't seen any photos of the pool completely drained. There is just the photo from EquiSearch of them attempting to locate her body by using a pole with a camera to be able to uh, look into the pipe. So it may be the case that the water was drained below these pipes, but not drained completely. And so the violation here is that the water level is not being maintained at the correct level for skimming and recirculation. That's not surprising given the incident and the pool being closed. All right, sorry about that. I just had to sit down. I went to donate blood a few hours ago and normally I stand up to record and that was not going to go well. So just had to sit down to finish out this video. So continuing where we left off, they were looking at fences and gates as well as water level. So we were up to this point. Then next up, uh, the facility is now closed permanently until further notice due to the incident. And so that is safety features were also missing from the facility. And then there is a uh, recounting of events that looks like it is in line with the report from the family. So upon arrival, spoke with Alex, lead maintenance. He provided the permit, which had a name change, but under the same ownership. Name change was conducted on both accounts. Main drain document was provided and still valid. However, small pool has 32 inch channel drains on the walls without a valid document stating their function, date of installation or date of expiration. A full inspection was conducted, multiple violations were observed, video footage is available. However, manager stated that the footage is being reviewed by legal and we would have to wait to receive a copy. Once video footage is available for review, please contact the inspector below to acquire a copy of the surveillance footage. Okay. Please be advised that all pools and spas shall be maintained under the supervision and direction of a properly trained and certified operator. This includes being able to provide the volume of the pool or spa to the inspector to confirm the pool turnover times. Working flow measuring devices or flow meters are necessary to calculate turnover times. Pools shall turn over in six hours or less, spas in 30 minutes or less, and waiting pools in one hour or less. Pre-1999 pools shall turn over in eight hours or less. Enforcement actions will occur at the next routine inspection if not in compliance. So 
I'm not sure why this particular section was included. I don't know if it means that they were unable to measure the flow of the water because the pool was turned off and there had been major excavation involved. The water level was not at the right place to be able to get an accurate flow. I don't know if Alex or the person the health inspector spoke to was unable to provide a pool volume and so unable to fulfill these uh, operator knowledge or training requirements. There's not a lot we can know from these statements. One of the things that really does come to mind though is I'm confused personally as to what is the small pool because in the photos that we looked at before regarding the facility, I'll put a few of them on the screen here, but I would have thought that this lazy river was one continuous pool. And so what is the small pool if we are talking about there being channel drains on the walls? What is, is there a big pool? Is there a different pool? What pool are we talking about? That is definitely unclear to me. And so depending on whether we're talking about a big pool or a small pool, then that turnover rate will vary. So if it's a small pool that is categorized as a spa, then it is required to have a faster turnover rate, which could in turn require a faster pump, but we don't know from these details. So that is the first inspection report I came across a few days ago when I was editing the original video that I posted today. I do want to look at the second inspection report that dates from Tuesday, March 26th. It is a little bit different. It's a little bit more thorough. The previous inspection report that we looked at was dated from March 25th and the times were approximately 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. noon. This second inspection report comes from the second day, the subsequent day, when somebody came back and spent over six hours reviewing. Uh, we have some details here of the small pool in the middle of the lazy river. So let's go back and look at the previous one here just for a second to see if we can get some clarification. So if we go back to this original, this is the first inspection report we looked at. Here we can see that the type of investigation was submersion and the location was the lazy river. So that creates actually more questions for me than answers because the lazy river is, I believe, the perimeter. And from the photo from EquiSearch, it's unclear if we're talking about the lazy river or are we talking about a small pool in the middle of the lazy river? I don't know. So let's have a look at this inspection report and see what comes up. Okay, so starting off down here, we don't start off very well. We have a suction outlet cover missing. So for the suction outlet system and return inlets for the pool and spa, one floor return on the sun shelf was missing a cover. The sun shelf is a shallow area where people will lay back and suntan, or it can be a shallow part of a pool where kids are playing. And so it is missing a cover which is not great. And for pool and spa observed a sharp deck edge at the corner of the deck in the waterfall area. So perhaps some tile had chipped or some coping had come loose. We don't really know the extent of the size of that sharp edge without a photo. Here is that air gap conversation again, I mentioned. Uh, wastewater disposal for pools and spas, no air gap was provided on the backwash line. So I can't personally speak to what that would mean or why that's bad. I don't have that mechanical background, but anytime we see an inspection report and something is missing that should be there, that is obviously concerning. Uh, there is the failure to make available upon request the drain cover VGBA, Virginia Graham Baker Act, proof of compliance documentation for the channel drain in the waterfall trough. So essentially channel drains are installed, but there is no proof of installation when they were installed, that the conditions were measured, that they were appropriate for installation. So that water speed, flow rate, pump curve, pump strength, opening of the pipe, et cetera. And there is a requirement that this documentation must be kept on site and made available to the investigator. Um, so that it looks like they're giving them the opportunity to find that documentation. The proof of compliance must include the make, model, dates of installation, expiration date. So all of these drain covers will have an expiration date based on when they're manufactured and when they're installed. 
whether it is a plastic drain cover that's suitable for three or five years submerged in water, whether it is a metal powder coated drain cover that is suitable for seven, 10, 15 years when installed. And that lifespan is set by the manufacturer in conjunction with standardized testing. So they are being asked to email the drain cover information to this investigator, Curtis Cagle, within 14 days. And then they're also saying that operationally, there should be records of testing results and maintenance activities retained on site. If federal law requires a more lengthy record retention period, I'm not sure what it does for the state of Texas, it may be longer. So further violations, no water testing kit was provided on site. So that means there's no mechanism by which to measure the free available chlorine, total chlorine, combined chlorine, pH, alkalinity, cyanuric acid. That is a very basic requirement of commercial sites to monitor the chemical levels to make sure that there is adequate disinfection, the correct or safe pH level in accordance with state or county regulations. Discussion here of open doors from the hotel hallways and entrances. I'm not gonna go into that one again, but I think it is very likely that if an incident occurred on Saturday and the site is being reinspected on Tuesday, it is very likely that those doors are still propped open. Whether they should be or not is not the point. I just wanna be realistic that when you've had a major emergency, when you've had a fatality, when you've had some sort of mechanical failure or engineering issue, doors are gonna be left open, garbage is gonna be left strewn around, nobody is cleaning up the site, nobody is necessarily changing the conditions that uh, the event occurred within. For some people that is actually a strategy, don't change anything, don't do anything. I also think realistically, it's just the case that people would not think to close the doors, close the gates, lock the fences, that sort of thing discussion here about gaps between posts and windows in terms of barricades. Uh, so there is obviously going to be certain requirements in Texas as to what is expected to barricade the pool for safety. Here it goes into further the glass fencing. So there was a glass fence around the pool apparently has been removed in the area of the deck where search and recovery occurred. So as I mentioned before, if there was a need to bring in equipment by which to excavate the pool deck and open up pipes, that would have taken up a large area of space. And so the glass fence was removed. And so they're asking for the door to be kept locked. There's further discussion here about um, latching devices on gates, uh, the height of glass gates. I'm gonna skip over those. Fencing is important, but we need to focus on the root issues here. Operation and management of pools and spas. There was an issue, the observation of fecal matter on the deck that is thought to be from a dog. And so dogs and animals, except service animals, should not be in the pool area. Uh, the pool was partially drained at the time of inspection. And then further to the previous inspection, the actual water level shall be maintained with the design operating water level range of the rim, gutter, or skimmer. So I'm not sure why they haven't drained the pool completely unless their legal advisors have stated not to change anything at the scene as of yet in terms of water level, but this pool is not going to be open for use anytime soon. So I'm not sure what the value added is in terms of keeping the water in the basin unless the pool finish is such that it does need to be kept wet. Um, so the inspector is absolutely in the right to comment on the circulation, but the pool's not being used. Permitting requirement, no person shall operate a facility without a permit issued by a health officer. So this is the one that people are making light of online. A few people are commenting, was there a retrofit, a renovation? Was there a change that occurred? Is that what the drain covers tell us? And that they did not seek a permit to reopen or they did not seek a permit to renovate. I'm not personally comfortable making that claim or statement just from this line, but it does make you wonder why don't they have a permit for this small pool specifically or for the whole site? I'm unclear because the day before the Lazy River was inspected and the permit was provided. So does this small pool, is it a change? Was it separated from a different system? Was it built? We don't have a lot of details. I'm not willing to um, hypothesize here. Enforcement and closure, right? So this pool is now closed until further notice. And then there seems to be an absence of safety signage in the pool yard. And then there's some details here. So 
The pool is officially closed. Lock all gates, doors, post closed signs that are red tagged. Do not allow anyone to use the pool until passing a reinspection. The reinspection may take place on or before April 26th of 2024, so roughly four weeks from now. All violations shall be corrected before the reinspection date as compliance will be assessed. If the pool is ready before the reinspection date, please contact the investigator. If more time is needed, an extension request may be made via email to the investigator. These are all very standard procedures in most jurisdictions in North America. If you get your work done sooner, great. We will attempt to come out and reinspect. If you need more time, please confirm that the pool is still closed to bathers and there is no rush to reopen and reinspect. All gates that shall open outward, sorry, all gates and pools shall open outward from the pool yard. So this is what I believe people have been talking about online. The operator failed to obtain a pre-opening inspection prior to placing the pool into operation after a remodel. Per CH 43-9G of the City of Houston Ordinance, the health inspector shall inspect an aquatic structure that has been constructed, remodeled, or altered prior to its operation to determine the compliance with the approved plans and specifications and with all applicable requirements. A pre-operational inspection fee will be assessed in conjunction with the inspection of an aquatic structure. An aquatic structure that fails to pass this inspection may not be operated or used. They are required now to provide a copy of the building permit, ownership verification form, pre-opening document request, and W-9. Chemicals in the pool were not tested due to the water level, so the pool is not recirculating. Pump has been turned off due to the water level, so there's not adequate water circulating hydraulically to run the pump. The pump would become damaged. The, there would be too much air in the system, so the pump has been turned off, but the chemicals will be checked at reinspection. So there's a couple of other quick comments I want to make here. If, um, let's hypothesize here for a moment. If somebody built or renovated the small pool and did not seek a operating permit or did not seek approval to the design plans before making changes, whether it was plumbing, whether it was drain covers, that is going to be a huge issue. So whoever did the work, whether it was internal to the double tree, like internal staff, whether that was a third party contractor, they needed to seek approval for the design plans at the pre-construction stage from the city of Houston. This is no different in most jurisdictions. Same as here in Alberta. I've often had pushback from clients who say, well, I'm just replacing this pump with this pump or this filter with this filter. There's very few exemptions in Alberta where you can make a change without notifying the health inspector. Any substantial changes in terms of disinfection, filtration, circulation, those are considered renovations or retrofit, and they do need to be approved in advance of starting the work by the regulatory agency because they want to make sure that there is not a dangerous condition that will develop. And then to a lesser extent, they also want to confirm that there is going to be adequate circulation, adequate filtration, that somebody's not going to cheap out and say, I don't want to buy a four horsepower pump when I can get away with a three horsepower pump when there are going to be certain design and operational requirements based on the age of the pool, the type of the pool, the jurisdiction of the pool, the function of the pool. All of that is considered by the health authority, the health inspector. They usually have specialists who look at the design of the pool and the function. So to zoom out here for a second, if the hotel made changes and a third party company came in and made those changes or was directing that work or conducted that work, that's gonna create a huge difference in my personal opinion in the liability. So certainly the hotel is liable if they are found to have been operating the pool without achieving a permit or asking for a permit or waiting for a permit. But some of that liability, in my opinion, as a layperson, I'm not a lawyer, is going to be shared, I think, if there is now a third party company 
uh, pool service company, pool construction company, if they undertook work and they did not get it approved by the local department in advance of starting, and then they didn't get it approved in advance of opening. So there's two critical failures there if it is shown that this is what happened. Critical failure to notify the department of an intent to make change, and then also critical failure and bad decision making to open the pool without the permit or without asking for it to be inspected. Now, with that said, is this unusual? No, absolutely not. I have fired clients who have thought it no big deal to go out and make changes without notifying their health inspector or their health department. It is one thing to truly not know that you have to notify and then let them know, hey, we made this change on February 1st and we didn't know we had to notify you. Here are the technical specifications of the changes that we have made. We have closed the pool until further notice that you can come out and review these changes. That's one thing. It's completely another to bypass the whole process. If that is what has occurred here, where construction occurred, changes occurred, the plans were not approved, the work took place, the pool reopened, and nobody had the opportunity to check the quality of that workmanship or the safety of that workmanship. So that is a huge development. I am unclear from the photos we saw earlier, the lazy river versus the small pool. I'm not really sure what the difference is. I'm not sure how the building was built in the first place. We don't have the design plans at this stage. And so I'm not gonna hypothesize or theorize what exactly occurred, but definitely these inspection documents do show us that there was a lot more going on than maybe we're aware of in the initial reports. And so whether it was the case of new plumbing occurred, changes in the water circulation, new drain covers, uh, openings that didn't have covers, it's difficult to say without photos, without plans, but certainly this is damning evidence when we talk about how could this have even happened. And I would say that certainly opening a pool without seeking inspection of any work that's been done is a very concerning practice. And so it's definitely very worrying as to uh, what other hazards might be found when a further mechanical assessment is done of the pool and the structure. I would imagine because a lawsuit has been filed, there will be any number of expert witnesses from the pool industry, of which there are many, several of whom I know through my committee work in different groups that will be called out to look at the actual design and operation and construction of the pool. One last thing I wanna comment on, which is circling back to the first inspection report, the ownership, but just a name change of the property. So here in Alberta, I have learned through repeated dealings with Alberta Health Services, who is the health uh, enforcement uh, organization for the province of Alberta when it comes to pool operations. Anytime a property is sold, transfers ownership, or there is a legal name change, that results in the pool permit here in Alberta for the commercial site being withdrawn and cancelled. So if Hotel X is sold to Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Smith reopens it as Hotel Y, the initial pool permit that was issued to Hotel X's ownership is cancelled and invalid. Hotel Y, Mrs. Smith, must go out and seek a new pool permit application through the province. And although that might seem over the top, there might have been changes to the structure between owners or during the rebranding, let's say it went from a Holiday Inn to a Hilton or from a Hilton to a Marriott, that there is a requirement for the agency, the province, to have a look at the site and recertify it safe to operate to the current standards. And so I do find it really interesting that there has been a name change, but not an ownership change. In Alberta, in my understanding here, that name change would still precipitate a cancellation of the commercial pool permit here in Alberta. The fact that it's still the same ownership doesn't matter, that name change cancels the permit. In this situation, when I was looking up the social media accounts for this property, which is currently known as the Double Tree by Hilton Houston Brook Hollow, on Instagram, when in the last video I shared a clip from an Instagram reel, 
there was a different name attached to the hotel. And I didn't think anything of it. I was just figuring the, the real was wrong. But now it does make you wonder if the name changed of the property, and there's many reasons to change the name of a hotel, that's not nefarious. But if there were changes, then what notifications, if any, was the Houston Department of Public Health given? Further to that, when I was saying earlier in this video that it was difficult to locate previous inspections for this hotel, now I'm wondering, do I need to go back and look up the old name of the hotel to find different pool inspection reports? I'm going to wrap it up and leave it there. This is already quite a long video. A lot of things I wanted to unpack from these inspection reports. I will link to them below. Let me know in the comment box below if you think I got it right, if you think I got it wrong, what other information would you like to have to understand what's going on here? And I also want to make sure that we come back to the focal point here, which is that this is an unimaginable tragedy that probably could have been prevented. It resulted in a family losing their daughter, Aaliyah Lynette Jaco. She really needs to be at the center of everything that we talk about. And I don't want to overstate her name because the family is experiencing their own trauma and they don't need that further compounded by their daughter's name being everywhere on the internet in terms of that's the only way that she's remembered. And I know the family of Virginia Graham Baker has asked repeatedly that people separate the name of their daughter, Virginia Graham Baker, from the act that bears her name, the Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Safety Act. They have no problem that their daughter is remembered in terms of a new safety standard, but she is her own person who is separate from the act. And so I want to really center Aaliyah and her death in this tragic situation, but I also want to be cognizant of the fact that we, we really need to keep talking about this topic for a long time going forward, and we don't necessarily want to make it any worse for the family. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you in the next video.